Welcome back to another episode of The Morning Buzz. I'm Russell Gahagan, and sponsoring The Morning Buzz is Torquey Coffee. I know a lot of fishermen out there get up early to go fishing, and Torquey Coffee can help you get a little uh, mojo in your uh, in your groove early in the morning. So this morning we got a new guest on The Morning Buzz, Drake Hurd. Drake is a walleye tournament angler who's going to be fishing head-to-head this year and has fished uh, the NWT before. If you follow walleye tournament fishing at all, it's hard not to follow Drake as he's been kind of all over the place with uh, great videos and um, I think they've been doing some TV show stuff and all kinds of stuff. But Drake, like myself, sort of wears multiple hats. Uh, he also manufactures custom lures and now he's, he's running a company called Fin Gear, which is what we're going to talk about mostly today, uh, which manufactures equipment. How are you doing today, Drake? Hey, good, Russell. Good to be here. Um... Yeah, I mean, you, you, you kind of said it. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to make it in this whole fishing world and, and enjoying my life doing it. So um, I, I kind of wear the multiple hats thing um, with, you know, the custom lures, tournament angler, and and, and rod holder maker now, or, or fishing equipment, basically. So i um, super excited to talk to you a little bit about it, and uh, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, give us a little rundown of Fin Gear. That's the brand name. Um, and I know that I've gotten some of the products already for a boat or two that, uh, you know, we've got customers rigging here, and I'm pretty impressed with the stuff. But why don't you give us a little background of, you know, sort of why you're doing it, uh, yeah. you know, how it started. And, and really what, what intrigues me the most, to be honest with you, Drake, is the fact that, you know, you obviously fish, and you fish a lot. So, you know, the, the people that are involved, are actually using the equipment on a regular basis where some of the other brands, I'm not, I'm not picking on anybody. I'm just saying some of the other brands are owned and operated by, by people who are busy business individuals, but maybe aren't on the water on a regular basis. So they're relying on other people to sort of tell them uh, what's needed out in the market and how to build it, yada, yada. Yeah. And um, so essentially we started about, well, it's been about a year and a half process of just, um, research and development. Um, it's myself and Robert Cardenas, another tournament angler. He's been fishing just as long as I have. And we kind of felt a need there to d- develop a few products. I mean, there, there's a few other of our competitors out there that have great stuff. We use their stuff for a lot of years. Um, but we just found little tweaks and things that we wanted to change on a product um, or products that we like. So, we thought, oh, let's just do graph mounts and rod holders to start. Well, then it branched into all sorts of different things. So now we have, I mean, rod holders is a big one. Um, graph mounts uh, is another big one. Um, and then tracks and then accessories. You know, I, I, we want to make it easier for fishermen to fish. You know, when you're out on the water, you want to be organized as best you can. You know, as well as I, if you got stuff laying all over the place, it's it's a mess, and you never know when you're going to get a, a hook in the foot or something. So, um, we're trying to create it, and make it easier fishing for everyone, um, so that you can enjoy our product, and it's going to help you catch more fish. Perfect. Let's start with the base part, which is the track. Um, you know, one of the challenges in this industry, from my standpoint, being a retailer, uh, especially this time of year, from you know January through May, is we're rigging a ton of boats. Um, and when I say we, I'm saying, you know, I have customers coming in basically daily or calling yep. daily. They're like, hey, you know, I got a brand new boat on order or I bought a used boat and I need to rig my boat out uh, for Lake Michigan. Or what I'm hearing a lot of nowadays is I want to rig my boat up, up for a crossover fishing. I'm going to fish Winnebago, right. Green Bay and Lake Michigan. So I want to set up to do all three. Um, one of the challenges is getting the stuff. Um, and that's one of the things that, you know, I feel like uh, Fin Gear could separate themselves from some of the other brands is just availability of the product. And again, that's no knock on anybody else. It's just that for whatever particular reason, the uh, especially the Lake Michigan or Great Lakes, uh, probably a little more than walleye fishing even, uh, equipment uh, industry is pretty small. There's only a couple of brands that really are involved in it. And because there's only a couple brands that are really involved in it, um, those brands are extremely busy and it's really hard to get stuff. So uh, starting out with the tracks, I kind of talk about the color options, the links, sort of some of the things there that you guys offer. Yeah, so I'll be honest with you, tracks in Minnesota and like you go west, north and south Dakota, not a ton of people use tracks. So it was interesting when we developed them. 
Um, you know, we thought track is a track. We made a few little tweaks to ours that we thought would, would help them. Um, but we started anywhere from, you know, six inch tracks that people, I'm kind of surprised, are starting to stick them all over their boat. It's kind of interesting where they stick them because it's, it's super easy. A six inch track, they can stick, um, you know, downriggers, they can stick live scopes, um, are going all over the boats. Um, coffee holder, you know, coffee cup holders, whatever it may be. So we start with that six inch where guys can put them all over. And then we basically go to 12 inches, our next one. And then after that, we basically go up all the way up to 72 inches is our longest one. If they want custom, you know, lengths, we can definitely do that too. Um, we just did a set of 84 for a guy in Iowa that wanted some for his salmon boat that were 84 inches. So um, we're, we're trying to gear up for as much as we can. Um, as far as color options, that's where we're going to kind of set ourselves apart um, on, on everything. Um, so silver is obviously a, a basic color. It's it's what we sell a lot of, don't get me wrong. Um, but so many people these days are going to, I want to customize it to my boat. I want to customize it exactly to the colors. Well, what we're doing is actually Cerakoting. We're not anodizing our stuff. It's called Cerakote. And they've been using it on guns for 20-some years. It's a super durable, super tough stuff. Um, but it allows us to give us a lot more colors. So not only do we have silver, but we have black, blue, red, orange, um, yellow, and they have a gamut of colors. I mean, there's 130 some colors that they have. Um, so if you want that custom look or custom color, you know, we're more than happy to help you out there. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds really, really cool. So in rigging boats, what you just said is, is so true. Each and every boat, when a customer comes in to visit me, I go over with them individually because everybody's need is a little different and every boat yep. design is quite a bit different. So some boats, I'll give an example, like a Warrior 2090 Tiller, uh, which you had a couple of those and, and we just rigged one of those. Yeah, that's a perfect boat for a big, long piece of track. That's yep. a, yeah, that's a perfect boat for a big, long piece of track, right? Down the side of the boat, um, one big long piece of track, 60 inches, 72 inches, whatever you'd like. And then yep. there's a lot of other boats, especially council models, where, you know, you might put a piece of 36 or 48 inch on. You may stick a small piece of six inch in the back corner for the downrigger, and you may stick two 12 inches in the front for a couple of rod holders and a live scope and all that kind of stuff. And that's really where this game has changed, in my opinion, because you know, when right, when we first started dealing with tracks, it was one piece of track on the side of the boat, and that was it. And that made it, yeah. that made it sort of fairly simple and pretty easy, and you stock, you know, a 24, a 36, and a 48, and that's all a guy needed, and everything was silver and yada yada. But, yeah. what I, you know, what's going on here is these boats are becoming long-term purchases for a lot of individuals. Um, you know, they're expensive. Yeah, if you're buying a brand-new boat, you're probably yeah. spending 60 on up. Uh, you yep. know, and maybe north of a hundred grand. And if you get a red one or a blue one or something, you know, you want to separate yours from everybody else's. Uh, and that's one of the things fin gear is going to be able to do with tracks and rod older colors and yada, yada. So, yeah. um, really exciting stuff. And I think it's the perfect time to talk about this stuff as we're sitting here in March right now, where a lot of people are at home trying to figure out how to rig their new boat. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're all getting the itch now as it's starting to warm up. Why don't you talk a little bit about the rod holder? Yeah. Uh, grab one here. Um, so a rod holder. This is just our standard four-inch rod holder. Um, one of the first things that you're going to see is we have these number rings here. Um, when we, one, of our, one of our buddies, um, John Tennyson, actually said he used to put his numbers on there, write his numbers on his rod holder, and we're like, well, why don't we come up with some sort of ring so that when you get a bunch of lines out and you're setting rods, you don't remember. You start reeling them fish and you're like, crap, how much line did I have out? Or, or, or you know, what was that set at? Well, these numbers have, they have a little mark right here um, that you can twist these numbers. They rotate left and right. So if you're putting on however many feet of line, you know, we went all the way up to 900 feet of line, basically, you could set out. But it allows you to put that number right on there so that you remember it. I mean, it's you'd think it's just common sense, but when you get reeling in fish and this and that, it's super easy to tell your buddy, well, yeah, just set it back out to whatever the rod holder said. You know, you don't have to worry about it. Um, this, the second kind of feature that I want to talk about is 
we have a little bit of a step down um, cradle here it, it, and we designed that for a certain reason um, you know so many line counters nowadays there's all different sizes but a big thing is that they're going to low profiles and low profiles never really necessarily fit in there right um, so this step down actually allows those low profiles to fit in there nice and snug so that you don't have to worry about them falling out but yet they're not super hard to pull out but if you have the big, you know, the big round reel, which a lot of guys do, I still use them on my lead core and everything else, that kind of fits up in here and sits in there good so that it's nice and upright. So um, those are a few of the features. Um, obviously, we have the tilt pin system. So you just pull this pin, tilt it back and forth, depending upon where you want to tilt it. And then let's see if I can, you know, and then you can spin it, you know, 360 degrees. So it gives you all your your movement that you would need per se, depending upon how you're fishing, whether it's planer boards, flat lining, you know, whatever it may be, um, you know, it gives you all those options. Again, we can do any color to help match them. And then um, we also have um, different lengths. I can't even think of the word right now, like a step up system, go all the way up to 20 inches, basically. We can go higher, but it starts to get fairly heavy. So we, you know, if guys really want to get up there, then we suggest maybe going to our trees, which, you know, we're hoping are out here in the next couple of weeks to a month. We'll have our trees all dialed in uh, and kind of go from there. So, Yeah. So it's fair to say that that's the only holder you have right now, but there's other stuff coming shortly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I mean, I was, I was going to tell you, I told you two days ago or whatever, we have the tubes all figured out, um, which will be the same type of system. Um, you know, they can go on any of the heights too. Um, they can rotate 100 and, or 360 degrees, and then it's the pull pin system again. So you can tilt those tubes based on how you, you know, pull the pin. So we are coming out with all this stuff. I, one of the things we didn't want to do is launch it all at once and then get an in inventory trouble. So we're trying to just kind of space it out a little bit so that we feel like we can deliver on time. Like you said, I mean, it's a big thing. We have a small window in this fishing world and, and we want to make sure everyone capitalizes on it. So we're just kind of slowly adding these things. So over the next couple of years and so on, we'll have all this stuff, but we'll be more prepared and everyone's ready to rock. So that's a great idea. So uh, we've got a cradle style holder, we've got a tube style holder, and then we have a tree coming. Those are all uh, key components, probably the three most popular styles of rod holders when we talk crossover fishing for both walleye and salmon. Uh, so that yeah. should do, you know, do the average guy who's rigging up a new boat uh, do them really well. So one of the, probably the next big thing that we look at when we're rigging up a new boat is electronics mounts. Everybody's mounting multiple electronics now, whether it's one on the dash, one on the bow, two on the dash, one on the bow, 12-inch uh, screens, 16-inch screens, you know, 8-inch screens. It's all over the board. So yep. the days of just buying a plastic ram mount are, are pretty much gone, um, yep. especially for the, the guys, that, again, that are probably listening to this podcast who uh, are buying a 18- to 22-foot boat that plan on taking it on Lake Erie, Lake Michigan, Green Bay, you know, those bodies of water where it gets rough and it gets rough in a hurry. So, you know, they need something sort of uh, high end and durable that uh, can hold their two, three, four thousand dollar piece of electronics um, and keep it from banging all over the place. So what do you got there? Yeah. Um, so here's our basic graph mount. Um, you'll see it, it's actually fairly similar to our cradle because we, we, we kind of kind of wanted to come out with the same system. Um, you know, like you said, Russell, I mean, we're spending so much money on these boats and graphs that we want to protect it. We want it in for the long term. A lot of these guys aren't just buying them for one year. They're going to buy them. And it, it may be one of their only boats that they buy for the next 10 or 15 years. So um, here's kind of what we have here. Very similar. It, it'll hold all your um, graph mounts, whether it's Garmin, uh, Hummingbird, Lowrance, you know, Raymarine, wh whatever they may be. Um, all these holes here should line up with all the, the most recent units and everything, um, even back a few years too. Um, but same type of system. I mean, you can get multiple different um, bases on here, whether you're going to bolt it on and you know you're not going to move that graph. Um, you're going to want this base. We also have thumb screw bases where if you know you're going to be moving that graph around, sliding in a track or moving it around, we have quick release brackets too, um, depending upon what you want to use. Because, you know, one of the other things that we've noticed over the last 
year is people are starting to put graphs in the back of their boat and for walleye fishing. And a lot of guys didn't do that because they were just always looking forward. Well, they found that it's easier if that graph is in the back, you know, you, you can watch your board so much easier, know where you're going and everything. So um, they're kind of moving them all over. Um, same type of system, you just pull this pin and you can tilt it, um, you know, however much you want to tilt it. Um, and then same type of thing here is you just pin, you just pull it up, and then it's spring loaded, it locks back down wherever you want it to, to sit. So um, we wanted to make it easy for people to use, yet very durable. Um, it, as much as we want to say it, we didn't want to use any tools. Um, just for the simple fact is you're out fishing and you're out moving around, you don't want to take some tools out of your glove box or wherever, drag them out, have to tighten stuff down. Um, this way it's super easy. You can adjust it however you want, depending upon where you're fishing in the boat. Um, and, and this makes it easy. You don't have to use any tools and you just do a few quick adjustments and you're off fishing again. Anyway, and yeah, sorry, one other thing, Russell, if you don't mind. Yeah, um, one, one of the other things, um, that, that it hasn't really, I wouldn't say hit the walleye world or up north a ton. The bass guys have seen it, but they're over the foot pedal mounts. Um, we have a few options here um, too. So, um, you know, you can fit all your units right here. Um, this can go up front. Um, some guys actually take these and put them on their dash. We actually have something coming here, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, um, that we're working with Brett King to help design. Um, he, the guy's super smart when it comes to this stuff, so he's uh, kind of helping us design some few things. But this one, you can hold one graph, or you can have we have a little attachment here. You can pull multiple graphs. So the the thing that we're seeing is even on that other graph mount that I showed you, is guys are wanting to put two graphs on one mount or maximizing their space. They want to stack them or whatever it may be because some of these windshields get tight or whatever it may be the situation. Um, so that's where we're hoping to help out there too, is if you have multiple graphs, you know, we should have those attachments for you. Yeah. It seems to be the popular thing now is at least with a lot of people, instead of going with one 12 inch, a lot of customers I'm seeing are going with two eights or two nines, uh, just yeah. because they want to separate their GPS from their fish finder when they're out on the water to make it sort of easier and a little easier visual. Um, so they're not switching screens or trying to do the dual screen thing or whatever, which can be a little bit complicated. So, um, yeah. as I mentioned early, earlier in this, uh, episode of the morning buzz, you're a tournament fisherman. Uh, you know, you, you're on the water a lot of days. Um, I know that a lot of people probably maybe know you from, uh, you guys do some videos. Plus you were on, uh, fin addiction TV, I believe it's called yeah, fish um, addiction, the yep. NWT yep. sort of trail kind of following you guys. Yep, Mr. Dixon. Okay, talk a little bit about, you know, what it's like to be, you know, on the NWT, and now you're doing the H2H thing, but sort of how that's kind of taken you into building this stuff, and what you, you know, what your thoughts are on this stuff, because obviously you've been in all conditions. You've had some beautiful days out on the water uh, for tournament days, flat calm, probably not a breath of wind, and you've had a lot of days that weren't anything like that, so... Talk a little bit about that because I think the average guy is going to go through some of that. While a lot of us like to fish when it's nice, a lot of us do plan vacations and we're tempted to go when we're on vacation because we're on vacation. So talk a little bit about that and the weather and the elements and all that stuff. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, um, w when we started developing this stuff, um, Robert kind of made a joke about it. He's like, we could do this, this, and this, and I'm kind of laughing. It. And we just – the more you fish, the more you find little tweaks here and there that you can tweak other products or tweak your own products to, to improve. And like my dad always says at my shop, um, you know, if you're not trying to improve every day of everything, you, you're not you're not right. And these companies, you know, we, we thought we could come in here and develop something that's new, exciting, yet we're going to be constantly changing stuff to, and constantly adding things, little tweaks here or there that, that anglers want. Like you said, I... I, I, they think fishing is glorious and stuff. And it is, there's times where it's great, but you're in every weather condition there is, you know, when you're tournament fishing and, and we need stuff that is reliable, doesn't break down because we don't have time to be off the water when we go to these events. So, um, we, we wanted it to be, um, you know, a step up 
Um, yet we want it to be affordable too. And, and, and I say that it, it's so interesting, you know, you have your graph mounts that are $29 Ram mounts and they, and then they go all the way up to $400 graph mounts. But, um, when you think of it in the grand scheme of things, I mean, we're putting two, three, four thousand dollar $4,000 units on these things, you know, so what's another couple hundred bucks to, to help protect that stuff into the future? Um, you know, that was one of the big things that we wanted to make sure is that our stuff is protecting your stuff into the future too. So, and again, I, I didn't really mention it on the graph mounts and stuff, but again, we can customize them to any color you want, um, you know, to, to match that boat. Um, it's a big thing we think. Um, and I think a lot of people are going to like it and they have been taking advantage of it the first month and a half here that we're rolling it out. No, I agree with you hundred percent. And what's unique about <clears throat> the great lakes and salmon fishing in particular is it puts a lot of wear and tear on equipment. And that's one of the biggest things I deal with on a daily basis is when I have customers come in who are primarily walleye fishermen and they've bought in either walleye gear or a step up high end walleye gear to go salmon fishing on Lake Michigan. And then they quickly realize that that's just not going to hold up, whether yeah. it's the rod, the reel, the rod holder, um, you know, whatever, uh, even the graph mount, um, because they fish Winnebago, which don't get me wrong, Winnebago can get choppy and get ugly and, and, and can beat yep. you up, but it's not Lake Michigan. You know, you go out in Lake Michigan and, and, you know, it's two footers and it quickly becomes four and you're six miles from the harbor, you're going to find out what four footers really are. Um, <laughs> and you, you need this stuff to hold up. And the biggest thing is, yeah, the biggest thing is guys until they, they really see, really really see a 20 pound king smash a dipsy diver in a rod holder they don't understand how much pressure and uh how much that really can do some damage to some of the other you know just kind of average daily models that you pick up at your at your tackle store so it's really awesome to see you guys making a high end high quality um you know piece of equipment that a guy can be confident in that he can go out and fish big water walleyes on erie he can go fish you know, Mille Lacs or Winnebago, which is more of a, you know, a, a finesse style of fishing, or you can go out on Lake Michigan and fish salmon all with one product line of products. Yeah. And that, that's kind of what we wanted to develop. Cause like you, like you said earlier, you know, you're kind of right there in the, the middle of stuff where some guys are walleye fishing, some guys are musky fishing, they're fishing the great lakes, they're fishing Winnebago, you know, any of those small lakes around there. Um, you know, we wanted it to be the most universal so that they could use it for all that stuff. Um, you know, it might be a little bit, uh, excessive for pan fish, but you never know when you're going to go on that salmon trip. Your buddies want to go out and you know that you have the equipment that you can do that, you know. So, um, you know, that's where we really wanted to step in and help people with that. And uh, we're hopefully doing that. Awesome. Yeah, no, I think I think you are. And I think you're going to continue to do that. Um, maybe tell the viewers at home where they can see this stuff and then where they can purchase this stuff from uh, from maybe some different places. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so right now, um, the, the best place is we're starting to get a lot of questions. The best place is to go check out the website, um, fingear.com. Um, that's the best place to check it. Um, we are setting up a few dealers, um, but we're being very selective. Russell, you're, you're carrying the stuff in, in, in that area, and, and we're super happy to have you on board with it. Um, you're going to be one of our main guys over there. Um, we do have, you know, Woodland Resort up in the Dakotas and one here in Minnesota. Um, so we are picking up a few retailers, but we want to be able to make sure, like you said, to pick up growth. We've gotten a few other um, requests and stuff, and we're just being very cautious because we want to make sure that we can deliver at the same time. So um, that's the best way is check out the website. Um, you're going to be stocking it. So if, if people want to see it, take a look over over your way, you know, obviously at the shop there. Um, you know, they can. So um, those are the couple options right now. If you got questions, feel free to reach out um, to myself, Robert Cardenas, or, or just message us, call us, whatever's easiest for you. Um, we're here. We're here to help. Um, had a guy yesterday call. He said his, his rod solars are older. Um, we introduced those Lund um, mounts and he loved those for his boat, but he said none of the whole patterns matched up. And I said, you know what? That's no problem. We can help you out here. Um, we're growing too. So if you're asking for it, we're hoping other people are asking. So, um, you know, you specifically, Russell, uh, I mean, we're, we're using your input and, and, you know, we've talked about a few other things that we need that you think 
the salmon world could use because I'm the furthest thing from salmon here and you, you have a great mind when it comes to that stuff. So as we get going here, you know, if anyone has ideas, feel free to reach out, but we're going to use, you know, Russell and whoever else to help us along the way um, so that we know we're making the best stuff out there. So I appreciate the time this morning and everything, Russell. It was great to be on here, great to catch up. We get to message every once in a while and see each other at shows, but, um, you know, when we get to sit down and talk, it's really interesting to hear what you have to say and and moving forward, we hope it's good for the both of us. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. I appreciate you taking time this morning. It has been a it has been a very odd year without having shows, um, you know, and then there's a sort of unique um, characteristic here as, you know, you've, like I said, you've gone from what I would consider, you know, you've been making baits for a while, so you're a custom bait guy, but you, you really got hot and heavy into this tournament fishing thing, um, which is a, a, a great deal, and I think you guys have done a great job, especially when it comes to the marketing, I guess is the right term, you know, from just the fact that you guys are doing like the TV stuff and the video stuff, and you're really allowing the people at home to sort of jump in the boat with you and feel like they're fishing the tournaments. And then now you're doing this equipment thing, which I think is really, really going to work out well for you guys. And I think it's going to help a lot of fishermen at home who are looking for a quality product and just, uh, you know, aren't sure which one to get. Or, or like I said, availability has been tough. There's multiple other really good brands out there that make really good stuff. Um, but it's just hard to get it because they're really busy. Um, and that's okay. And that's great. I'm appreciative and glad that they're all really, really busy. But, um, you know, when somebody wants to order something on a Monday and hopes to maybe have it by Friday or the next, you know, Monday or Tuesday, you know, as of right now, that's not an option. And hopefully, right. you know, if you guys get in the mix and you get some inventory and stuff, you know, that becomes an option. Yeah. And like I said, do we know it's a short window? You're, you might be going on your one fishing trip of the year, maybe, and you, you need your stuff and it got a little bit behind on whatever. Um, so hopefully we can do that. You know, we, we're just trying to help fishermen. Um, you know, it's funny, we're, like Warrior Boat says, you know, I, I'm no longer with them, but, you know, built by fishermen for fishermen. You know, that's what we're trying to do is help, you know, those guys uh, out as much as possible. We're fishermen. We, we're out there every day, and and we're hoping to continue to do that. Yeah, it's always been obvious to me. I've been in this industry a long time, almost my entire life, and it's been very obvious to me over the years which pieces of equipment, and it doesn't matter if we're talking tackle, uh, fishing equipment, rods, reels, whatever, which pieces of equipment are designed by fishermen that are on the water versus people behind the desks. And that's no knock to anybody behind the desk. It's yeah. just a fact of even even myself, and I say this all the time, when I spend the entire summer in the store or when I spend half the summer on the water, the tackle we make even in house is better when I can get out on the water more. Yep. It's just, it's part of how it is. I mean, that's part of the, the, the research and development, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you just can't do some of that stuff. Some of that testing development design stuff from inside a building. You just can't, you got to be able to get out on the water. So it's really nice to see that, um, you know, there's going to be a product line available. Again, it's fin gear, um, www.fingear.com. Is that right? Yep. That's correct. Okay, so for those of you at home who, if you want to check out this new line of products, uh, www.fingear.com. As Drake said, you can contact me if you want to also talk about it. I can help you sort of lay things out um, based on your exact boat and your exact model and, and uh, sort of how I think it will lay out the best for, for your particular boat. A uh, couple of great things they're doing here with multiple color options, multiple product options, new products coming pretty rapidly. Um, I don't see the development of this slowing down much, and, and it sure sure seems like it's a really uh, awesome company that's going to just kind of keep going along here and, and improving along the way. So we're really happy to have Drake Hurd on this morning on the Morning Buzz sponsored by Torquey Coffee. And remember to check uh, YouTube uh, or your favorite podcast app every morning, every Sunday morning, excuse me, at 7 a.m. Uh, to follow the Morning Buzz by Russell's Fishing Tech. We'll check you out next week. and. Thanks one more time, Drake, for being on. Yeah, thanks, Russell. Soup. I appreciate it. And I should have figured out how to get some coffee here for me. I didn't know that was even possible. So I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks.